So today we're discussing, we're closing out transcending inconsistency. And we're closing it out with something that we don't always have in mind because we're so drowned in our own situations. But having compassion and understanding for the diverse spiritual journeys of others. So today we're talking about worry about yourself. Okay, wait. So it's the topic of worry about yourself or having compassion and understanding? Worry about yourself. Okay, got it. And before you get started, ma'am, hold on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do to do, Grace. Do to do. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's few housekeeping, few housekeeping things. First off, hot off the press, okay? Hot off the press. You now, you know how Antonio rolls, okay? Okay. It's not, I'm not insulting your intelligence, but I'm gonna read this anyway. You know how Antonio rolls. He's all about adding value, and this book is no exception. Whether you're looking to up your sales game, diverse, diversify your business, or make smart investments, Antonio has got you covered. And the best part. This game-changing book is available for just $10 as Roman Rome, okay? Trust me, the value it offers is off the charts, okay? So if you are serious about leveling up your financial game and achieving the success you deserve, you can't miss this. Grab your copy at this link right here, right now, not now, but right now. It is called Strategies for Riches, Your Ultimate Game Plan for Smart Selling, Investing, and Branding. It's only 10 bucks. $10, $10, you cannot beat that, okay? $10 to up your financial game? Come on, okay? If you know somebody that needs to up their financial game and they, they were just talking about it to you yesterday during the weekend, send this link to them, okay? All right, that's that's one. Two, uh, WonderCon is coming. Don't let it, listen, let me tell you, okay? Now, it has moved to March, so we, we got some time. Okay, but you know March will be here before you know it. You know why? Because it's already August of 2023. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be the end of the year before we do it. So you want to get your tickets. I'll put those links in the chat. Okay, but you want to get your tickets. You know what? I'm going to mention that it is in person and virtual, but I know all y'all want to be there in person. You know, we all want to meet each other, love each other, say, hey, okay. So, but I'm going to put all the links out there for virtual, for in-person and virtual. It is going to be a grand time. You know, Antonio don't do nothing bottom shelf. It's always top shelf. So you want to make sure you get your tickets for that as well. And then last, but certainly not least, Rhino Leg is coming. And when it gets here, you don't want to be in Rhino Leg without leads. So come on, get your ATS leads. You need that. You need that. Okay. Ask Romy Rome. Okay. I'm trying to tell you, Romy Rome knows some things. Okay. Just just take a a page from Romy Rome's book. Okay. You want to have leads. So when you get in Rhino Leg, you have, you already have the grand CRM. It's grand. It's way more than a CRM, but I'm calling that right now. But when you, you have that part of Rhino Leg, so you have your leads and Rhino Leg will do everything for you with your leads. And that way you have something to go on and not just starting like, oh my God, I got this great Rhino Leg. What I do with it? You have leads to go with it. Okay. 10,000 leads every single month, high quality leads every single month, specifically for your business, $49 a month. And when you get ATS leads, you're already grandfathered in rhino legs. So, hey, you can't beat that little bat, okay? That's that's my that's my deal for this morning. I'll be back. Thank you, D. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I jumped the gun. My apologies. I had, I had jumped it of the gun. All right. Uh, so today we're talking about more about yourself. It's one of my many personal values that I try to work on daily. I'm I'm actually, that's a wrong verbiage, that I work on daily because it is a daily journey. But the reason why you need to worry about yourself is because you don't know where anyone else is on their spiritual journey. And we have a tendency to judge people for their actions, their reactions, what they say, what they do. But we forget 
that we were once there too. We forget that we were once in a lost state where everybody had us all the way messed up. We forget that we were once in a state where all we wanted to do is just stay at home underneath the blanket all day. So when our friends or our family members call us and they're like, man, da 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 and because we are so above that now, we try to coach them instead of listen to where they are in their journey. But when you worry about yourself, you have more empathy and more compassion and more understanding, a more of an open mind when you approach anybody, because everybody is on their spiritual journeys. No matter the age, Don is eight. He's on a spiritual journey. My dad is 64. He's on a spiritual journey. And we have to, we have to step out of ourselves to be able to appreciate the other person because of the fact they are also on their spiritual journey. So today I want to talk to you guys about worry about yourself. Brianna? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I don't like, I, how about concern yourself about yourself or another word other than worry? Because you don't want us worrying about ourselves. You want us thinking about ourselves or improving ourselves. Another word from worry. Gotcha. So look, I, I got you, Miss Susan. Mind your own business. Yeah. <laughs> that one's better. Mind your own business. That's your own spiritual business. That's your own emotional business. That's your own physical business. That's your own mental business. Mind your own business. Right. That, that will work out a little better. Yeah, that, that's, that's it better too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's important because we have a tendency to be victims. And when we are victims, nobody else's spiritual journey matters. Nobody else's life journey and purpose matters. But when you mind your own business, you, uh, you allow others to be in their spiritual journeys, their spiritual walks without judgment. Because when you mind your own business, you too busy forgiving yourself and working on yourself and focused on your spiritual journey to worry about what Harry's doing next door. But in order to do that, you have to have compassion for people. And you have to be open-minded. I was talking to Grace yesterday and I told her one of, Antonio was teaching something and he was teaching about empaths. And I can't remember if it was during one of my enlightened moments during Pathbender. <laughs> but what I caught during that, uh, it, and it could have been one of the mornings he taught, um, what I caught during that was, I'm going to say some things. They may offend you. I don't care. No offense. But we are all God. We are all God experiences on earth. Grace is a God experience. Mr. Phil is a God experience. Uncle Romy Rome is a God experience. Melissa, Adonia, Trinace, we are Prophet, Miss Sandra, Mr. Phil, Miss Susan, Antonio, we are all a God experience. We are God experiencing life through us. And one of the things about being an empath is we get to we get to feel the experience of others. So we are a God experience that gets to tap into another God experience. And I was talking to Grace and I was like, man, what I am striving for in my purpose is to be a God experience that adds to enlightens helps another god experience so i have the very special privilege 
of being able to experience the emotions of another God experience so that I can be a great a great God experience for another God experience. But I can't do that if I don't mind my own business. Because the experience that I'll give Grace's God experience will be absolutely horrible if I'm always a victim, if I'm always judging her, if every time she comes with me, uh, comes to me with a problem, I'm belittling her or making her feel less than. So in my God experience, because I have the gift of being able to experience another God experience, it is my responsibility to make sure that this God experience, that God has the greatest experience that he can with this experience, and then to enlighten and help and make somebody else's experience great. But I can't do that. If I'm so stuck in my own experience and not my God experience, but my human experience. If I'm so stuck in my human experience, I won't be open-minded when grace comes to me and wants to share something with me. I'm going to shut her down because I don't feel like it because I'm not in the mood because I'm in my own way. But she made me a part of her experience and a part of her spiritual journey. And I just shut her down, which makes her God experience sad because she has no one to share it with. I'm not, I'm not putting this on grace. I'm just using her as an example. So we need to foster compassion and understanding for the diverse spiritual journeys that are around us. And the way we do that is we have to have an open mind and we have to be empathetic towards everyone. Now, I know y'all are probably like, well, you know, that's easier said than done. Yeah, it is. But in my meditations yesterday, from the words of Prophet Jerry. <laughs> in my meditation yesterday I had a conversation with my ancestors and when I tell y'all they was like look girl let me let me help you this 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 is what your problem is first off time does not exist so to every last one of y'all you have not wasted any time doing anything prophet Jerry you have not wasted time in the bed it is okay time has not been wasted because if time doesn't exist then you can expediently get the things that you want if you just release the things that don't serve you. That's the first thing they told me. Then they had the nerve to tell me, now it's time for you to focus on your spiritual journey. Listen more to your soul was actually the actual message. Listen more to your soul. Be more in conversation with your soul. Because my soul is my is is my God guiding me. He talks to me through my soul. So if I'm not paying attention to what my soul is saying, I'm screwed. But as Antonio taught us, what my ancestors also told me was you need to also get rid of the, dang it, I forgot the word he used. It's in law of one, distortions. You have to get rid of your distortions. And you have to stop escaping your reality. How many of y'all escape your reality? It's just me. Like you do stuff so you don't have to focus on the actualities of things in life. Like binge watch Netflix or, you know, get lost in Instagram. Start off on TikTok at it at seven o'clock in the afternoon and then when you look up the sun is up in the seven o'clock in the morning that kind of stuff don't nobody else do that that's just that's just me oh my bad oh, okay then wrong crowd so let me move to the next one all right <laughs> but that's what happens and this is what my my ancestors told me first off congratulations you actually listened to us because we've been trying to talk to you for a long time but since now you're in a position where you're going to actually listen to us let us tell you something you have not wasted time because time doesn't exist and if time doesn't exist then you can expediently get what you want 
if you listen to what your soul is telling you, you stop trying to escape your reality. I was like, okay, bet, gotcha. Lesson learned. They were very clear, very clear. But in my spiritual journey, that means there's also somebody else who's going through the same thing. So if I don't mind my own business and work on me, I can't help the next God experience get through what they're getting through. That's the purpose of a testimony. It's letting people know that, yes, I was in a test, but I made it through and here's how I did it. But if I'm trying to escape my reality, how can I help the next person if I don't mind my own business? So the first thing that I need to do is understand and be aware enough to know that there are different spiritual beliefs and practices and philosophies and whatever it is. And I've had the privilege of tapping into a few different ones only to find out that they're all the same. And that's the first, that's the first mistake that we make. We don't have the open-mindedness or the empathy enough to know that yes, Patrick has a different practice in his spirituality. But if you actually actively listen to what Patrick is saying, he's saying the same thing that your Bible say. He's saying the same thing that your tarot cards told you. He's saying the same thing that the that the prayers that you pray every day at a certain time tell you. But we don't take that time to actually just step back and view a person as a person. We view them as their religion. And that's where we mess up because we don't mind our own business. So how many of you have come across people on your path that are outside of whatever religious, spiritual practice that you have and you sit there and you talk to them only for them to open your minds to what they do and not once did you ever say anything about your spiritual journey? Shoot, Grace. I guess we are the same damn person. <laughs> so we raising our hands to the same things. Oh, okay, there go Trinace. All right, we're not alone, Grace. We're not alone. <laughs> but in talking to these people, they opened you up and now you're sitting here and you're questioning, okay, well, if that's what they believe, and this is what I believe, what makes them so different from me? So when they come to you and they're like, man, I'm going through it and da 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 because you were open-minded enough to listen to them, you don't go at them through your religion. You go at them through the empathy of man, they're going, they're going through it on their spiritual journey. You know what? I just walked out of something like that. So let me talk to them about it and see if it helps them. I'm not going to lie, I do that with Grace all the time. I tell her too. I'm like, Grace, I'm only saying this because we're the same person and I didn't did it. Or I'll tell her, Grace, we're the same person. I'm still trying to work on this together. So how about we work on this together? Let's let's do let's do this as a partnership because uh, I ain't mastered that one yet. I'm still working on that one. <laughs> I have, Grace has mastered her anger. Me? No. <laughs> no. I'm not even going to lie. I have yet. It is not mastered. I'm learning how to pause and that is helping me when I analyze my anger. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Pause, Deanna. Walk your way through it. Why did this make you mad? Okay, it made you mad because it made you feel like this. Okay, why do you feel like this, man? Because the last time I felt like this, then the last time I felt like this, it was true. Okay, was it really true the last time you felt like this? Okay, hold on, let me think about that. It felt like it was true. Like I have to go through this whole process during my anger. I don't know what process Grace does, but to me, on the outside, she has mastered it. Cause on the inside, I be going through it. <laughs> but if I had no respect for Grace's spiritual journey, I wouldn't see that she's mastered her anger. I would see her as a dumping ground for mine. And that wouldn't be fair to her. So the first thing that we should do, and again, we are closing out transcending inconsistency. First thing we have to do 
is educate ourselves and have awareness. It's okay to read. If we ain't learned nothing from Mr. Phil, if y'all ain't paid attention to the books this man has called out, y'all are blind as bats. Y'all and your sonar rate and your sonar don't work. We know Mr. Phil goes to church. We we under, we know he reads his Bible, but that ain't the only Bible he reads. That's not the only book he reads. He don't just read books about Christianity. He has an he has an education on the on different spiritual beliefs and backgrounds, on different studies. Because it's not just about religious beliefs. It's also about different studies. There's astronomy. There's astrology. There's the law of one. There's Urantia. Though they're all different philosophies and thought processes. In my head, I have a different idea of what they are, but that's me. That's my spiritual journey. To me, they're guidebooks. Their, their structure, Grace. Their structure. Because law of one tell you straight up, mind, body, soul. We are mind, body, spirit, complexes. If you understand that you are a mind, body, spirit, complex, you will understand what you need to do to reach the highest expression of yourself. That's where the connected life came from. Mind, body, spirit, complex. We are a complex of three makings, mind, body, and spirit. Me, emotional too. And if you get all of those aligned, you reach the highest expression of yourself. And then when I read the Bible, okay, God actually, if you follow the life of Jesus, you have structure. I haven't read the Quran yet. I'm going to get there. I haven't read the Torah yet. I'm going to get there. I haven't learned Hebrew yet, but they say if you learn the language of someone else, you have more compassion for that culture. It's the same with the spiritual journeys. If you learn the spirituality of someone else, you have more compassion for their journey. So the first thing you have to do is educate yourself and be aware. Learn about the different spiritual beliefs and practices. Why why meditation versus prayer? What's the difference? Learn it. Praying four times a day versus praying when I first wake up and when I go to sleep. What's the difference? Learn it. Reading tarot cards versus reading the Bible. What's the difference? Learn it. Be aware. Because when someone comes at you, like, man, y'all yeah, was talking to my ancestors yesterday. And oh Lord, they hit they they pop me in the back of my head. That's my conversation for my spiritual journey. Whereas Grace will be, man. Grammy gonna knock me upside my head and she gonna cuss me out. Same conversation, two different beliefs. Whereas same belief, two different conversations. Grace is saying, Grammy, I'm saying ancestors, and they're both the same thing. But we get so caught up on the verbiage that we don't pay attention to that person's spiritual that person's spiritual journey. I've had the privilege of knowing atheists. But growing up, I was taught, oh, they just hate, they hate God and worship the devil. No, that's wrong. They have belief in nothing. But because I didn't mind my own business, I judged them until I actually got to know them and my awareness was raised and I was educated on. I was taking care. I grew up with them in school. Like they were my best. They were my friends and classmates. But it wasn't until I was actually a caregiver for an atheist who, by the way, was an astrologist and studied at NASA and all these wonderful things. Which made sense to me because she could break down to me the different stars. Like Subaru is actually uh, it's a, actually seven sisters. Like there's seven stars. 
that's where Subaru comes from. They're actually seven, there's a set of stars and there's seven different ones of them. They each have a different name. I never knew that. But she had a paper out and I read it and I educated myself and I started asking her questions and she didn't mind the questions. But I became aware of her spiritual beliefs and practices and philosophies and I didn't shun her for that. I opened up and asked questions because her spiritual journey was different from mine. So when you educate yourselves about various traditions and their underlying principles, it can lead to not not a greater tolerant tolerance, but a greater love and appreciation for the diverse perspectives. Mr. Field is walking diversity. If you listen to what he's saying, if you actively listen to what he's saying, he is walking diversity. Antonio is walking diversity. There's no way that a man can go to a whole nother country and have a conversation in somebody else's, in their language about their religion and it's supposed to be okay. That does not happen. But when you're walking diversity, everybody's spiritual journey is important to you. Like how many of you have, lit, I'm actually asking this question, how many of you have sat down with someone from a different culture and just actually listened to them talk about it? You have grace, Satish. Mm -hmm. And have you noticed how Satish's practices are not that far from ours? But he actually appreciates and is actively on his spiritual journey. When he goes for his walks in the afternoon, it's not just for his physical health, it's for his spiritual health too. It's part of his spiritual journey. You ever notice when he comes back, he's like this completely not completely different person but he's a little bit more uplifted yeah he didn't have some conversations we just don't know about him but he made himself one with whatever his walk was about so the first thing that we need to do when it comes to having compassion first thing we need to understand when it comes to minding our own business is educate ourselves and have awareness of others and then the second one is actively listening. Antonio talks to us about actively listening all the time. Be present where your feet are. The first time ever, I can't remember what I was watching. And of course, my ancestors slid it across my path because they knew I wasn't actively listening. And it said, be present where your feet are. Actively listen. If you're present where your feet are, you're in that moment. You're not thinking about what happened yesterday. You're not thinking about what you're going to do 10 minutes from now or tomorrow. You're in that moment. Be present where your feet are. Because if you're present with someone else in their journey, you understand and not judge. You love and not push away. Just because they're not on the same journey that you are on does not mean that they're any less than you. But when you mind your business, that's all, just mind your business. Sorry, uh, a moment from uh, <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bella, mind your business, that's all, just mind your business. But when you're actively listening to someone, you can actually hear what they're telling you you would hear their experiences you would hear their beliefs you would hear their values and you wouldn't judge them and this doesn't just help when it comes to having awareness and empathy and understanding for someone else's journey but it also helps you in life how many of you have missed out on experiences in your life because you were not present where your feet are you were not actively listening i can't begin to tell y'all how many times i've done that so much so to where i must i thought my cousin who's flying off to japan for a school program was like in high school he looks like he's in high school that dude is a grown man 
That boy is 24. I thought he was like 16. And I had the audacity and the nerve to lean over to my aunt and like, how is it raising teenage boys? You know, I'm I'm not I'm not there yet, but I don't think I'm ready yet. And she pointed to my other two cousins, like, you mean those two? She said, you might want to ask your, your other aunt because mine is 24. I was like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, he's 24. I was like, I thought he was like 16 or 17. And she laughed. She, 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 she it, it wasn't a bad laugh, but it was one of those, oh, baby girl. No, he's 24 kind of laughs, you know? And I felt some kind of way because I have not been actively listening to the lives of my family. And when I'm with them, I'm never present. So I missed out on a lot. Just like I've missed out on a lot with Dawn because I'm not present and I'm not actively listening to him. When I actually actively listen to him, I could, I could pinpoint some stuff and I'd be like, dang, that's all me. And in my head, I'm like, baby, I'm so sorry. That's mommy fault. Like in my head, because I'm actively listening to him and I'm hearing his spiritual journey. And my little eight-year-old is struggling with some things at eight. But it's his spiritual journey. The only thing I can do is God. But if I wasn't actively listening or if I wasn't present, I would have missed out on all of that. Can I, can I? Go ahead. The floor is open. Please. Like y'all can, in, please interrupt me at any given moment, any given point. <laughs> I don't care if I'm in the middle of a sentence, just go ahead. Go ahead, Sasha. <laughs> Be because it, some what you're saying is so key because I believe this is this is Sandra Lucky. There are things that are happening. How do you say it? Um, simultaneously, and yeah. it's amazing to see it happening just because of where I am. Y'all have no idea of the challenges that I go through simply to listen to the class, <laughs> to be present. And it, when I tell you I'm amazed with what God does to help me to stay present even though everything around me is happening simultaneously and I have to and I don't I know it's him because I know it's not me there's no way that I could be present with what's going on with my grand well the situation what's happening with with one of my grandchildren now and her her mom and deal with my own business and deal with being, because regardless of what happens, I've got to hear y'all. It's, it's like, I got to be in class. I can't, I can't have you call the call road and have me say, well, she's absent. It, it, it just doesn't work for me. And even if I get on and I cannot respond like now, God has blessed me. I got this little time, this little space. But let me tell you, while I am at work, when I tell you I, I am having a time trying to hide the phone because we're not now, we're not supposed to be on the phone because, you know, there was a problem and she's got it. And y'all know how it go. So for me to have my phone, it's like, I don't care. I have to be present. I have to hear. I have to know what's being, I have to know where we are, at least to be able to eat that food. Yesterday when I did my live, I talked about food for your journey. We all are on a journey. Some of us have not even gotten to the spiritual journey yet because we're in the carnal journey however it is still a journey because it takes the journey to get to the spirit uh oh i think you i think you there you go it's always something going on 
I just fell. The going in and the going out. When I can't, I, I promise y'all, I so love being present and know that even when y'all can't see me or hear me because I got to tuck the phone and hide the phone and make sure I can hear the phone and all of that stuff, I am still, <laughs> I am still presently here. And it is important because as I go on continuing in a spiritual journey, I have a chance to look back on the journey when I was unable to hear and see the things spiritually that I can now. Mm. And it is amazing because if you could look back and see where you have grown, you will know that it is only God that is carrying you. You know what I mean? It's yes, I like those footprints in, oh my God. Anywho, I just wanted to say that while I have this time now, while there are no managers and supervisors and people that got, you know, but anywho, you're still hidden, but love you. <laughs> love y'all. Love you too. Love you too. We love it when you are able to unmute your mic. We love you, Miss Andre. We really do. But being present, there's I was watching this video and he said there's a power that I can't remember who it was, but the guy was like, there's a power in showing up. And when you're present, you show up. There's ministry. And Antonio has said it multiple times too. There's ministry in just showing up. Seeds are planted. People are blessed. Lives are changed when you just show up. But if you're not actively listening, you're not showing up. If you're if you're multitasking, <laughs> you're not showing up. You're not being present. And you miss out on you you t when you're not present, someone can say something to you while they're on their journey. And when you're not present or actively listening to what they're telling you, you could give them information that could either pause them in their journey because it wasn't the information that they were to receive at that time. You could completely make them go backwards because you triggered them when they were op being open with you about their journey. You triggered them and now they're sitting here thinking, well, now I can't trust anybody. I can't talk to anybody. There's nobody who's going to understand. The one person I thought would catch me didn't get it all because you weren't present or you weren't actively listening. But then what do you miss out on when someone's telling you about their spiritual journey because you're not actively listening? They could have been giving you the keys to the city and you sitting here like, mm, and I'm hungry. What am I going to eat tonight? That was a good movie last night. I didn't like how it ended though. Like if <laughs> like we do that. Somebody be talking to us. It would just be like, man, soon as this call is over, I'm in the corner and warm up some spaghetti because it sure was good last night. I go for Coca-Cola. Like your mind be everywhere else but the conversation. See, Grace laughing because she know what I'm talking about. <laughs> When you're not acting, and then Grace told me something important. I'd be like, girl, you show right. That's exactly what you should do. And she probably sitting here saying, man, you know what? He made me so mad that I feel like driving my truck into his house. And if I sit here and I'd be like, that's girl, girl, you show right. That's exactly what you can do. And I wasn't even actively listening. The next thing I know, Grace is on the news and I'm like, what the hell? And when I go visit her in jail, she's sitting there like, well, D, you said that's exactly what I should. I said, girl, I wouldn't listen to you. <laughs> I hear words you say it. We can, and that's exactly what we do to people. It may not be something on that extreme level, but Grace could tell me, man, I'm really going through something. And I just feel like, I just feel like I should just, you know, become a hermit and shrink up and just isolate myself. And if I'm not listening, I'm, and I tell her that's, you know what, that's what you should do, girl. That's exactly what you should do. And she does that and disappears for three months and then slips into a deep depression. 
That's on me. That's me making God's experience through grace miserable because I was not actively listening. I didn't know because I, and because I wasn't actively listening, I didn't know that she hit a bump in her spiritual journey where she hit a wall that she didn't know how to tear down by herself and needed my help because it's a wall that I've knocked down before. But because I wasn't actively listening, I told her, girl, just leave the damn wall up. It'll be all right. That's exactly what I said to her. And because I said that to her, that's what she did. But if I was actively listening and if I was present in the conversation, I would have understood that her wall was just like the wall I knocked down last week. And I can tell her, Grace, I just went through something like that. I haven't mastered it, but I have. But let me tell you what I've been doing to help me get myself through it. And if I was actively listening to her, I would know how to talk to her in her spiritual language. I wouldn't tell her, Grace, pray three times a day and speak Allah's name. I wouldn't tell her, Grace, go to the tarot cards and have a conversation with them. I would tell her, Grace, it's time for you to go see Grammy. It's time for you to go have a conversation. Grace, whatever you're praying about, you need to switch your prayers. <laughs> I would know how to talk to her because I was actively listening to her and I have respect for her spiritual journey and her spiritual practice. So the second thing we need to learn to do is actively listening. Now, sidebar, how does this help you transcend inconsistencies, Deanna? Well, because what you do unto others, you do unto yourself. If you have, if you worry about yourself, then you will educate and have awareness on where you are in your spiritual journey. You will actively listen to the God voice in you. And then you'll actively listen to those around you because God uses people to work. God uses his experience to help another God experience have a great experience. But when you hit an inconsistency, you argue with people about their journeys. Grace, you need to go back to church. No, I don't. Grace, don't you think you should? No. But Grace, you know, you should know better, Anne. I do know better. That's why I'm here, not there. Deanna, you need to. No, I don't. I fellowship every day. Every morning, I have two hours of fellowship and worship. So do I need to go sit in a church for two hours? No. I sit with y'all every morning between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And I have church with you. And I'm educated on different spiritual journeys. While Mr. Phil is the senior here with us, he still is on his spiritual journey. I see, mature. He's the, he's this he's still on his spiritual journey. And every time he opens his mouth, he shares his spiritual journey and his philosophy with me. That's church. Miss Susan is still on her spiritual journey. Every time she opens her mouth and speaks, she's sharing her spiritual journey with me. That's church. Every time Antonio opens his mouth, that's church. I've looked. Every time he opens his mouth, it's church because there's no telling what's about to come out of his mouth. <laughs> Every time Uncle Romy Rome unmutes his mic, that's church. Every time Miss Adonia unmutes her mic, that's church. So I don't have to go sit somewhere on a specified date at a specified time when I do it every damn day. That's my spiritual journey. So when you worry, I'm sorry, when you mind your own business, mm -hmm, mind your own business, you become a better experience and you become a better 
God experience and you make another God experience better. See, I don't know what Uncle Romy Rome's experience has been. I don't know what God has experienced through Uncle Romy Rome. I don't know that. I don't know that journey. But I know every time he opened his mouth, when I actively listen, I can tell that he's been through some things. And on his journey, he's battled some things. And on his journey, he's believed in some things. And it's got him to where he is now, but he's still standing. I know that much. I don't know all of Melissa's journey. But I know every time she opens her mouth, it's a, she's had some education on her journey. And she's learned some things on her journey. And her journey has gotten her to where she is now. But they also minded their own business. And they they focused on themselves. Go ahead, Trinace. That inconsistency is me and my kids every day, all day. Them suckers. They get on my nerves. They tell me they stuff. And I'll be like, that don't even seem right. Man, they have you telling me. I say, I'm not disagreeing with how you feel, but I just really think that's dumb. Mommy, you just think you better than us because you've been hypnotized and you've been going to all of these classes. I say, well, you should listen to me. Hello. I know more than you. You should listen to me. <laughs> that was this whole weekend. Everybody was at the house. I was at the house. They made me so bad. I moved my office into my bedroom and closed my door. And burned sage in the room so they wouldn't come in. <laughs> well, I have had, I've been hypnotized like four times. I've done the hypnotherapy like four times. So, in they mind, you've been healing. So you think you're better than us. Mm. I don't, but you all should listen to me because I have a different understanding. I have some life experience, but that inconsistency, that's, that's definitely me and them all day but they was pleasant this morning i don't know who they're gonna be um <laughs> this evening when i get out from work they were pleasant this morning though but see since you've been hypnotized and that's part of your spiritual journey they're not trying to hear you because that's not theirs and plus trinace you mama you supposed to say that kind of stuff that's a child that is a generalized child spiritual journey you my mama you my daddy you supposed to say that stuff to me but you don't know my life well look <laughs> i have come to realize my parents knew my life okay in some shape form of fashion both of them have known some aspects of my life because they lived it but because of my spiritual journey they don't know nothing they just telling me this stuff because they have to they my parents they supposed to tell me this stuff that don't really mean you know my mama ain't never done nothing in her life but she really has it but she really has not my dad has friends if he drives into if he drives on the island of galveston he's going to run into somebody and it may not be the best of the crop it may be somebody who used to do some stuff back in the day. He knows business owners. He, I mean, so when I look at my mom and my dad, it's like y'all had two different journeys. And then to hear them speak today, they're still on their journey. My mom still has childhood trauma. So does my dad. But that's their spiritual journeys. But because, but I, I just said it. The conversations I have with them today, I've been actively listening to these. <laughs> I've been present in these conversations and I've learned some things which makes me have more compassion and empathy for both of my parents. Y'all always hear me talk about my relationship with my mom because I'm a daddy's girl but I actively listen and I'm learning my dad's childhood and I'm learning the things he went through and I'm learning the possibilities of the trauma that he left in me because of how he grew up 
things I would have never thought of had I not been on this spiritual journey and actually actively listened to what the things my dad was saying. Perfect example. When I was younger, you know, we all, when we cute and petite, you know, don't have the extra roll going over the jeans and, you know, and we, we can put on the skin tight jeans and it just look like a layer of skin and we finna walk out the house thinking we cute. Yeah, I got stopped one day. Got my thigh pinched because he was trying to pull the material from my skin. He was like, hey, that's the second layer of skin. Why don't you go change your clothes? I was like, but daddy, this is cute. Yeah. But you can't separate the material from your skin. So why don't you, you know, go put on something a little looser? Mm hmm yeah didn't realize what that did to me and I started walking around wearing clothes that were two sizes too big because it was quote-unquote comfortable for me no it wasn't because it was comfortable it was because my dad pointed something out to me and I took that made a meaning out of it and started wearing clothes that were two sizes too big that actually looked like clothes on me instead of a second layer of skin. Even though I was fully dressed, you know. But now, let me put on the second... Watch what happened. I'm on my journey, okay? I'm on my releasing of the weight journey, Mr. Phil. Mm-hmm. I'm on that journey. I didn't, and I didn't release some things. Mm -hmm. wait until next summer y'all gonna be like d you can't be you can't be wearing them kind of clothes in public like what you talking about all the important parts are covered <laughs> no i'm just i'm being i'm being funny y'all but that is an example of when you are actively listening and present in a conversation and you are minding your own business you learn some things about yourself but if i was judging my dad if I was not list actively listening and if I was just in some other space I would have heard that and would have never figured that out and I've become more comfortable in my skin after learning oh that was an, that was an actual trauma that I experienced or that was some childhood trauma that I took and made a meaning out of and never knew I did so now that I know it and I can account for it I can control it The next thing that we need to focus on is having empathy and changing our perspective. When, when you put yourself in other people's shoes to understand the reasons behind their beliefs and their practices, then you'll begin to consider how their unique experiences and their cultural context have shaped their spirituality. And this can lead to a deeper connection and a sense of shared humanity. See, while Grace and I grew up alike, we still grew up differently in our spiritual journeys. But I have empathy for Grace's journey because of the knowledge that she has, the things that she has experienced. I understand the reasons behind her beliefs and her practices. I've also watched Grace step away from her beliefs and her practices and start a part of her spiritual journey that she, she didn't even know she was starting only to come back to that same spiritual journey, but with a different mindset. But if I did not have empathy for Grace in her journey, and I was still stuck in my own stuff, I'd be like, Grace, why'd you leave church just only go back to the same one? I can't tell y'all how many churches I left. Well, actually, I can. One, two, three. One, two, three. I left three churches. Three. Only to end up 
as a minister at my the last church. I am a Baptist minister, Uncle Romy Ron. Never grew up Baptist a day of my life. Ever. I've attended Baptist services because my grandfather was a deacon. He still is. But to actually grow up, no. Uh -uh. Services took too long. That was embedded. As a child, that was my belief. Church should not take 15 hours. Period. Ever. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but if I wasn't em empathetic, if I didn't have empathy towards Grace, that would have been my conversation with her. Why leave only to go back to the same one? But she didn't leave and go back to the same one. She left, grew, and then went back to the same one with a different mindset. Her, uh, her, um, what doesn't Tony always tell us, Grace? Her motives. Her motives were different when she went back. So the first time she was just going because she grew up there. Then she took a step back because she made an executive decision on her spiritual journey. And that's what she was doing, period. No, I'm not finna. Excuse me, Grace, because in my head, this is what Grace said to her. Yeah, I'm not feeling I'm not finna kill my grandmother because y'all want a body in a building. That's a, I felt like <laughs> like at that she had gotten to a point in her spiritual journey where it was the matter of my grandmother's health versus putting a body in a building. I'm not doing it. And if I was, if if I was the person I was when I grew up. I would have been on Grace. Well, Grace, that's what they make masks for. Grace, that's why they have that's why they have Lysol. Grace, that's why they make hand sanitizer. Grace, just put some alcohol in a in a spray bottle and just spray it everywhere you go. But that executive decision was a part of her spiritual journey. And because I had empathy, I understood. And I didn't judge her because I was minding my own business. Bless you. Like, how many of you have come across different people on different journeys and actually had empathy and, and understood that, okay, your walk is different. And I feel your pain in your walk. So, um, you know what, just, you, you, we don't even have to talk. Just sit with me. I got you. Come get this hug. You know what? I feel that you're struggling on something. Catch this cash app real quick. You know what? There's a book that I read that helped me release some things. Here, you can have my copy. My brother has copies of books right now. He said he opened a book the other day and had notes in it. And he knew it was mine. I was like, boy, you better be glad I love you. Because if I write in a book, that's mine. Them some personal notes. And if I gave it to you, I really, really, really love you, okay? <laughs> and he just laughed. He said, no. He said, I get it. But it's it's things like that. When you, you will give the shirt off your back when you have genuine empathy for somebody else's journey. Because you understand the smallest gesture will move them along. It may only move them along a millimeter. But when it comes to transcending inconsistency, transcending inconsistency doesn't, inconsistency doesn't just come with you. It also comes with having empathy for others because people are inconsistencies in our lives. And their inconsistencies will bump into yours. But if you don't understand their spiritual journey, if you have no compassion and no care for their spiritual journey, you will lose who you are just to focus on them. Okay. 
So number three, have empathy and change your perspective. And then cultivate humility. Oh, okay. I was about to say cultivate humanity. It, it, the, the word says humility. But it's not always about you. Your thought, you do not have the monopoly on spiritual journeys. It's not your journey that's the only truth, okay? Antonio has, it, y'all, it, okay, personal, personal experience. When you grow up as a spoiled egotistical narcissist everything is your way your truth is the only truth and everybody else's truth is fake you want to know what i have learned as a spoiled egotistical narcissist excuse my language my shit is not that important (laughs) It, it really is not it really is not because I'm just one experience and when I realize that I am just one experience of the many experiences here on this planet in this lifetime my stuff is this big because what Uncle Romy Rome is going through with was past tense, was going through with his sister is a lot bigger than what I'm going to wear tomorrow morning. Mr. Phil and Miss Susan are retiring. Well, I'm I'm not saying they retire. I'm just saying like in their, in their journey, they're at a point where they just want to sit back, relax, collect the check and watch their family grow. That's where they are in their journey. That is more important than what I'm going to eat after this class. We're not there yet, Deanna, but. That, yeah, you know, I rephrase. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> working, I say, we work more now than ever. <laughs> They're on, look, they are on their retirement tour. They are ready to sit back and collect a check and watch everybody else do all the work. Yeah. How many of y'all are there? I'm 40 and I'm there. <laughs> they and they have been doing this longer than I have been alive. But it's good you're doing that because it keeps you going. You'll be you'll be doing that doing that when you're our age because you love it. You know, you do you continue doing what you love to do. We love what we do, so we continue doing it. That is true. Yeah. That is very true. We're surrounded by people that had a nine to five that retired they're done then we have some that retired and started some little small business that used to be a hobby Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's some that are um still working but it's mainly you know the nine to five did the retirement and they're out playing golf every day or pickleball or something and dancing at night so come on yeah i want to be playing golf during the day and dancing and i want to dance in the rain in a what are those little not canal but like a little yeah the little hidden waterfalls and little water spouts yes that'd be fun island somewhere playing the rain in the water after i play golf all day yeah that would be fun that would be real fun <laughs> They have town squares here and they have bands, live bands every night. So people drive in their golf course and go there. They're like, I don't know how many, four or five town, town squares. So you can pick which one you want to go to, depending on the music. Saturday and sun, Friday and Saturday nights are big name bands. But I mean, people get their exercise, you know, with that too. Exactly dancing Uh, they're drinking (laughs) and then crashing the golf cart on the way home that that happens that's gotta hurt though you have nothing around me you you just hit something to fly 
like hey. <laughs> the soap opera here <laughs> <laughs> But it's that humility of understanding that I am but a speck. I am but a speck. In Cloud Atlas, at the end, um, there's this one portion of it where the gentle, there's this man, I mean, loves his wife, doing his duty to his father-in-law but decides that life is l making the right decisions was better than making the right money. And he told his, he, he burned a contract for the ship, the shipping of slaves. And his father-in-law was like, you know, what have you done? Like, you'll never, you'll never cause any change. You'll never do anything. You're but a, a drop in an ocean. And I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, yeah, I'm one drop, but I'm one drop of many drops that make up the ocean. When you think of yourself as just one drop in an ocean of many drops, it lets you know that you are not it. You are a part of it, but you are not it. Go ahead, Mr. Phil. There's an old story that many speakers tell, and it gets so bad that it's almost a joke to tell it, but I'll, I'll tell it anyway. There was a gentleman walking along the beach, and there had a bad tsunami, and there was hundreds of starfish that were walked up to the beach. And so he started, he picked up one starfish and threw it back in the ocean, picked it up another starfish, threw it back in the ocean. And the guy says, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm cleaning up the her He says, there's hundreds of starfishes out here. You can't make a difference. He says, I can with this one. So you're, you're kind of like the starfish story. I may, okay, I may not be able to make a difference with all of them, but this one I can, and the next one I can. And that, that story, and the crazy thing is, Mr. Phil, I've only heard that story when you've told it to us. That's the only time I've heard that story. And every time it makes sense to me, it's because we are one God experience. I am one God experience in, in a sea of many God experiences. No, I can't move the whole ocean, but I can be one drop that flows through the waters of life. I can be one drop that falls out of the sky and hits a person on their forehead. And for some reason, it makes them feel refreshed. I don't have to be the whole damn ocean. And narcissists believe that they're the whole ocean, not understanding that, no, you're just one drop. So I literally had and have to learn humility because egotistical narcissist your life revolves around me not the other way around but when I realize I am but a drop in the ocean like even I can say I know my purpose and I know I just said I'm an egotistical narcissist but when I say I know my purpose like I've had conversations with the ancestors i've i've had my conversations with god i've gone through the process they i've been they've come to me i've spoken to them i know my purpose but in knowing my purpose i had to learn humility because i'm not the only person that is on this journey and i can't do it alone I had and have to learn humility because in order for me to work in my purpose on this spiritual journey, I need people. I need other God experiences helping me make things better for other God experiences. So I have to humble myself. I have to learn humility. Because while I am a God experience, we are not meant to do it alone. 
And if I don't have the respect and the empathy and the consideration and the compassion for other God experiences, I will push away all of my help and I'll be a drop in the sand that just dried into the dirt. Learn humility, cultivate humility, know that you are not a monopoly. Your spirituality is not a monopoly. Your way is not the only way. There are 11 people on this call. Those are 11 different spiritual journeys. 11 different possibilities of education. 11 different personalities. 11 different God experiences. If you were just like me, we'd all be doing the same thing. There would be no diversity. There would be no excitement of learning somebody new. I wouldn't be excited to hear Mr. Phil say a philism because it will be something that I would say. So what's the excitement is something I know I would say. There would be no pausing to listen to the wisdom that Uncle Rum Rum is about to drop because it'll be the same wisdom I would drop. So what's the point? We're different for a reason because we each offer something different to the world. And when we cultivate humility and we understand that if there is somebody that is mowing their, their, yawn, their lawn at one o'clock in the morning on New Year's, I would have the humility to understand that whatever they're going through through their spiritual journey, this is something they need. And that is the right decision for them. Just because I wouldn't do it does not mean I have the right, excuse my verbiage, to shit on them while they're doing. And I'm only sharing with y'all things I have learned on my journey. I would never tell y'all something I have not been through, done, did, in it. Because <laughs> I'm still in the walking out of the ego, tistical, narcissistic, yeah, because my kid is a narcissist. Yeah, at eight. Mm. Got to work through that one. <laughs> but if I wasn't actively listening to his spiritual journey, I wouldn't have picked up on that. I wouldn't have picked up that during the years of his birth to seven, he downloaded his mother's narcissistic traits and is living in it. I mean, if I, I thought I was spoiled. He's the only biological grandchild for everybody. And it, and, and it is, I didn't know. No pressure there. <laughs> right, Mr. Phil? <laughs> Absolutely no pressure. <laughs> like, he's not the, I have a niece and a nephew. They came first. But he's the biological for my parents. You know, for my stepmom, he's the only because she lost a grandchild. For my stepdad, he's the baby. And for all of us, he's the first and the only. So from kindergarten, well, from kindergarten, but from the moment he came out the belly to seven, he downloaded, oh. This is really, I can do this and get away with it. The world revolves around me. Like this is what he was, this is what he downloaded because this is what we showed him. But had I not been actively listening to him over the past couple of years, I wouldn't have picked up on some things. I wouldn't have understood that he is not my toy, but another God experience on a spiritual journey. Yeah, he's just eight, but that's still eight years that he's been on his journey. And I have to have the humility to understand that I did not do that perfect. So I need to now 
humble myself so I can teach him humility because he has none. Absolutely. He has none. It is what it is. That's on me. I on, Now, if I was not humble, if I was still an egotistical, narcissistic butthole, if I was still the monopoly on spiritual journeys, I would say, I would put it all on his dad. Yeah, you're the reason why he's this. You're the reason why he's that. That's not me. I'm perfect. You're the reason. You're the reason. No. When you pay attention, you see yourself. And he'd be like, dang. That's how I make people feel. Because at, at four, he was making me cry. I never cried in front of him, though. But at four, my kid was making me cry. Like, dude. But that's because of the downloads that he received. That's what he learned from me. So if if he was giving me a reflection of my God experience that I give to somebody else, it makes you think, what if somebody put a mirror to you to show you the God experience that you gave other people? What would that reflection look like? Would you like you? Would you want to be with you? Would you want to hang out with you? That's because you're perfect, Mr. Phil. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Phil over there saying, yeah, I want to be with me. But it makes you, it really makes you think. Like at this point on my journey, I wouldn't want to be with me. I wouldn't want to be friends with me. Hell, I ask myself every day, why is Antonio and Grace still in my life? Because I have learned, I have minded my own business and have learned, man, suck. I really do suck. But in that, it makes me pay more attention to other people as far as how I make them feel. And it makes me mind my own business as far as I focus on you be better. That's not your battle. See, I take Exodus 14, 14 on multiple levels. First off, if I feel like I got offended, I tell myself, that's not your battle. Focus on you. Why are you offended? First off, what offended you? Why are you offended? Okay, work on this. Don't worry about, don't worry about who offended you. Worry about what offended you. And don't worry about what they did that offended you. Worry about your response and your reaction to the offense. They are not your battle. You are your battle. When God said, I will fight your battles for you. Shut up, sit down, do your job and wait for me to call you. Part of doing that job is minding your own business. work on you other god experiences are not your responsibility your god experience is not the monopoly of the world you are but a drop in an ocean so either be a part of the ocean or drop in the sand and drive it's your choice the next thing you need to do is find a common ground Yeah, Grace and I are completely different people, but we're the same person. We have some shared values, some shared principles, even though we're on different spiritual paths. All of us here are like-minded individuals. We have a common ground. We have shared values. We have shared principles. We are in pursuit of some of the same things. So instead of using our differences to push us away from each other, why don't we use our shared values and principles to build each other up? See, when you hit an inconsistency in a person, don't look for the inconsistency. Look for the common ground. See, I am learning, Mr. Phil and Ms. Susan, that marriage, you know how online 
not online, but like in movies and stuff, they'd be like, love, love surpasses all things and this and this and that and that. And then some people are like, you know, no communication does. And then some people are like, no, this does and no, that does. And some people are like, well, how do you, how do you stay in a relationship past love and this and this and that and that? There is still love there, but I am learning that relationships are not just about love. Relationships are about their a partnership where you find a common ground and you build on the common ground. Mr. Phil and Miss Susan have been together longer than I have been alive. I'm, my parents didn't make it past 15 years, okay? <laughs> they didn't make it past 15 years. I have one set of grandparents that stayed married but slept in two separate rooms. I have another set of grandparents that got married and remarried. So I really don't have, you know, a blueprint <laughs> of this. But I've learned you when the honeymoon phase is over it's the partnership that is strong because you have a common ground and that's what you focus on and that's what you build on go ahead mr phil well i uh, can't speak for other people but i can speak for me what what made us work is at least from my perspective is my commitment i was married before and i bailed in that marriage earlier than I might have should have. So I made a commitment that I was going to do everything possible to make this marriage work. So if it doesn't work, I will have to have done everything possible to make it work. Well, obviously we've never gone to that point because it's working, but it was that commitment that I'm going to do everything possible to make this marriage work because I didn't the first one. Mm. I love it. We have definitely had challenges in times where we had to go to that spot that he's talking about. I mean, when two people are together, it's inevitable. Every marriage has that. And it we had, stop. We had our we had our therapist tell us we should break up. <laughs> I mean, think about that. You go you go to a marriage counselor and he suggested that we should break up. <laughs> and then i talked to him in the wee hours of the night the therapist and said i want to save our marriage you know and he talked to me you know because he really cared about us but you know we go in there and you know yip 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 about the other so what's he gonna do after a while right right but it's like we never really talked to anybody about you know, we kept it inside for a long time. And that's the thing you don't want to do. You want to, you know, express, you know, when things get, when things got crazy, you know, with kids and all that, and you barely have time, that's when you really need to make the time mm. where you get busy with, you know, responsibilities and your, your work. It's really the most important thing that you have. Um, going and you want to work on it and enjoy it Ashay. have fun I don't know if y'all heard it but I heard the common ground Mr. Phil said commitment Miss Susan said I want to make this work they had a common ground come to a com have a common ground with those on their spiritual journey their spiritual journey might be different because they're a different they are not you they're not going to do what you do they're not going to see how you see they're not going to think or feel like you feel i'm sure i can guarantee to you that there are several couples out there that got married around the same time mr phil and miss susan did and they was like Shh, i'm out oh Bye. yeah <laughs> But they Diana, the most important thing is love. You know, if the love is there, you can save it. If it's not there, then you, I don't know. I don't think you should. I agree. And Antonio tells me often that the highest expression of love is forgiveness. 
So if you want to find a common ground, forgive first. And that's with every person. We think it's just us. It's just us in this life. It's just us going through this. But when you come across someone else on their own spiritual journey and you're actively listening to them and you have compassion and empathy for them outside of yourself, you're not the victim, but you are actively listening to someone else. You will hear them say, yeah, this is what I, this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm at. And you're like, man, you know what? Me too. You just found common ground. The definition of me too is common ground. Ms. Janice, I'm not doing it over again. And Ms. Janice, Ms. Janice tell me I'm not doing this again. I'm done. I've done that before. You know what, Ms. Janice? Me too. We have found common ground. It may not be the same thing we not doing again, but we found common ground that we ain't doing that again. That's right on that one. Now, certain <laughs> things, certain things you learn from, and if and to me, if you repeat and continue to repeat that same thing, that's bringing you so much drama. Uh, then you the fool. That's what I feel about it. So just move forward, and you do try to go with somebody that can understand and do you do have something in common and when you don't it's just not gonna work it's not you know no matter how long you stay or whatever is it's, it's not going to work so I choose to flee you know I'm not gonna stay in something where I'm miserable he's miserable you know so when I do it again for real I, I get to choose I feel like this time you know because I had two arranged marriage by my dad and then another two of just, okay, whatever. All right, will you marry me? All right. You know what I'm saying? This time I get to choose. And then when Phil was saying uh, commitment, you know, it's his common ground. You know, that's what it's going to be for me. I'm going to commit to wanting to be in it this time. I get to choose. Now imagine if, like Miss Janice, the com you come to a common ground with every relationship with your parents with your grandparents with your kids with your friends with but you do that across the board with everybody even total strangers me and grace we went to a store one day and this man just started talking to us and i told grace i said it's crazy i've been having random conversations with people like for a week straight, it was just random conversations. Like I went to the store one morning and I was walking and a gentleman, he was like kind of in front of me. So I told him, go ahead. And he was like, no, you go ahead. He said, I'm not in a rush to get home. He said, I'm married. I laughed inside my heart. My spirit laughed. <laughs> and then he ended up at the check, the self-checkout right next to me. And we, he was just talking. Like he literally just started talking to me. But me being me, I conversed with him. He's like, yeah, you know, he's like, he said, don't get me wrong. I love my wife. He said, I love my wife so much. And he said, you know what? But there's a key to it. He said, you never go to sleep angry. He said, how you go to sleep is how you wake up. So because I had compassion for him, because I had empathy and because I was just open-minded, he reminded me of something I forgot. Never go to bed angry because how you go to sleep is how you wake up. Then he told me a joke. I told Grace the joke, so I'm gonna tell y'all the joke. So him and his wife, they were having a party and all his friends were there, you know? And I can't remember, it was like an anniversary or something and he didn't get his wife a gift. And they were like, well, why didn't, you know, they were like, why didn't you get her a gift? He said, well, I bought her a gift five years ago and she never used it. And... They were, and she and he said, she came up, it's like, well, what gift are you talking about? Because I use every gift you give me. He said, well, I got you a coffin. I got you a plot. I got you a headstone and you never used it. I rolled, okay? I laughed so hard that but when I actually came up from laughing, he was looking at me laughing too. <laughs> Five years ago. He says, so I won't, I won't be buying you another gift until you use the gift I got you. And then that's when he told me, he said, but I love my life. He said, we've been, we've been through a lot of stuff together. He said, my marriage is not bad. I just joke about it at times, you know, nothing's perfect. And I was like, no, you're right. 
And so I finished and I was checking out and I looked at him. I said, you have a good day. And he said, you have a wonderful Sunday, pretty lady. And I was like, thank you, you too. And kept on going. But at that moment, in his spiritual walk, that was a conversation that he needed to have because there was something I needed to hear. But if I was not humble, if I would have been like, can't nobody talk to me, don't talk to me. If I wouldn't have had empathy, if my perspective would have been different, if I wasn't actively listening and if I wasn't educated and aware enough to understand that if he is having this conversation with a random stranger, it is something that he needs to get off his chest. I would have never received the reminder that you never go to sleep angry because how you go to sleep is how you wake up. That's what I got out of that conversation. Go ahead, Mr. Phil. You were both each other's angel. Oh, yay. That gave me chills. Thank you, Mr. Phil. So that's how that's how you transcend this inconsistency. You can't be somebody else's angel if you're so stuck in who you are. And if you mind your business, mind your own business, you'll be in a position where you will be so humbled you will be so compassionate for others because you worked through your own crap you've swept the dirt from underneath the rug you've opened the closet of skeletons and went and buried them finally you've gotten the cobwebs and the dirt out of the corners when you mind your own business you clean up your own house and you have no time to judge anybody else. But you'll have more empathy for them because you cleaned out your own house so you know how it feels. And you know the process that they're going through cleaning out theirs. Our common ground with humanity is that we are all human and we're all on a journey. And when we keep that thought process in mind, when we understand Grace is on a journey just like me. So if she falls down and scrapes her knees while she's on her journey, it's not my job to judge her and to tell her you should have worked out more and been stronger and been stronger so you can make this journey. No, it is my responsibility to show her my scars and say, I fell down here too. And since I fell down here too, let me show you my scars so you know you're not alone. Me Two is common ground. So instead of judging somebody that's going through something, find a common ground with them. There And there are some people you may not find common ground with because your, your journeys are just that different, but there's always something that you can say, me too. Me and Grace have two different journeys. But there's something that she may have been through that if she tells me or feels safe enough that she feels like she can tell me. And if I actively listen, I could say, you know what? Me too. It wasn't that exact thing, but let me tell you what I went through and how I got out of it. And maybe it will help you. Common ground. And then the last thing is respect boundaries respect boundaries see as an egotistical nar as an egotistical narcissistic asshole i don't respect boundaries i don't i have to learn to respect boundaries i be all up in dawn's space there are no boundaries there okay but <laughs> i am learning <laughs> how to even have boundaries with him See, when we're seeking to understand others, we have to respect their boundaries. See, I can't, I'm a hugger. When I feel your brokenness, I want to hug you back to health. But at the same time, I'm also taller and a little bit bigger than Miss Susan. So I need to respect her boundaries. And before I just go in to hug her, ask first is it okay if I hug you and then respect the fact that she's a little shorter than me and a little smaller than me and not squeeze the life out of her 
respect her boundaries. If Grace don't want to talk to me about nothing, I need to respect the fact that she don't feel like talking. So when I ask her, hey, you good? She say, yeah, I'm good. I just need to, I just put her on notice. Okay, I un I understand. You don't want to talk right now. You don't have to talk to me. Talk to me when you're ready. But no, I know you lying to me. And that's exactly how she and I, do. we do the same thing to each other. She'd be like, do you all right? Yeah, I'd be like, I'm good. But then I got, I got, I stopped, I stopped lying to her and be like, no, nah, I'm not good, but I will be. And she'd be like, all right. Because she know when I'm ready to vocalize it, I will come to her. But it's respecting the boundaries. I have let her know, hey, whatever it is, me too. And when you're ready, I got you. But I respected her boundary of, I don't feel like talking about it right now. Because I don't know, maybe her talking about it, maybe it's fresh. Maybe it just happened and her talking about it is going to inflame, it's going to add fuel to the fire. Or maybe she's now just now releasing it and I'm seeing the remnants of it and she don't want to talk about it because she doesn't, she is in the process of releasing it and don't want to bring and don't want to refill the whatever it was all over again. Respecting boundaries. Not everybody will be comfortable discussing their spiritual beliefs, what's going on with them, where they are in their life. And that is perfectly okay. Respect their privacy and their choices. Some people don't want to talk about it because they understand that in some cultures, it's taboo. I drop hints to my family just to see how they respond because I want to share my experience with them. So now I know I can say, yeah, I went and talked to my grandmother the other day and they'll be okay with that. But if I say, yeah, I sat down and had a whole conversation with my mom and she told me, mama, she proud of you. And Kelly, she proud of you. Uncle Spencer, she say, you still crazy. Uncle Robert, she say, you need to go ahead and just, you know, just chill out. Just come on home. And Uncle Bill, she proud of you. You're doing good. Like, I know I have to be careful because to have that conversation with them, it's going to be an emotional devastation. Because they miss the hell out their mama. There was one time I told my mom, yeah, you know, I used to see Mama all the time after she passed away. And she was like, I didn't see her at all. And that did something to her. So I have to respect that boundary. So every now and then, I'll drop it, I'll drop it, drop something, and then I'll read the room. And when I read the room and everybody like, oh, yeah, that's good. I'm like, yeah, keep going. Okay. I ain't dying. Okay. Ain't no boundaries up today. Let's do this. Yeah, I went to talk to Mama, you know, and, and you know, she, Mama, she proud of you. She real proud of you. And how my mama cries determines if I keep going or if I just shut it off. If she cry with a smile, I know I can keep going and say, yeah, Mama, she proud of you. That's all, that's all she told me. That's all I know. But she proud of you. But if I say she proud of you and she get that ugly cry going, that ugly cry face going, I know, okay, stop. She, she hurt too much right now. Let that go. Respect boundaries. And that's what everybody, Don is eight. He's on his spiritual journey, but there's sometimes he does not want to talk to me. And unfortunately for me, I have to respect that boundary. I know there's things he doesn't tell me because he picks, he picks here and there what it is that he wants to tell me. And I have to respect that boundary. So as we close out today on transcending inconsistency, I hope that I have been of service to you all. I hope that I have been a teacher, a friend, a partner on this journey. I thank you all so much. Uh, we will pick up on a new subject starting tomorrow, but I just wanted to thank y'all for going through this journey of transcending inconsistency with me. Thank y'all so much. You can plant better.
Whoa, 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 oh. whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, no, whoa, I'm not whoa. ending it. Go ahead. Yeah, tonight. Yes. Let's study a book, A Return to Love, written by our future president. Grace, you know where we stopped last time, right? Because I think I yes, missed it. So you got yes, it. Grace, Grace is great, man. Let's all give Grace a little appreciate. Let's send her a little love. She's the range behind her show. And then wins and challenges. And I'm going to share a win tonight. I had the opportunity to be on a call with Neil Donald Walsh on Saturday for nine hours. It was just like this. It was just like this, except for Deanna was Neil Donald Walsh. It was the same format. We could talk to him. You could interact with him. It was unbelievable. So I'm going to share some of that tonight on our winnings and challenges because I consider that a pretty big win. Yes. He's Absolutely. amazing. He, he's, he's just the way you wish you would be. You know how sometimes you run into people uh, that you admire and you say, I wish they wouldn't have done that. He was just as cool as can be. It was unbelievable. Mr. Phil, you're amazing. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So, be on the calls tonight. Whoop, whoop. Yes, and also, I told you I'll be back. Listen, <laughs> I'll put it in the chat again. Okay, you go ahead and get this wonderful creation of a book that Mr. Smith has created. It's called Strategies for Riches, Your Ultimate Game Plan for Smart Selling, Investing, and Branding. You want to get your financial game up? Get Grab this book. It's only $10. Only $10. And you know what is in the book is way more than $10 because Antonio goes above and beyond. He makes sure that you have everything that you need. Because I'm guarantee you, Jerome's going to come on here one day and he said, you know, Mr. Smith, I read that book that you that you wrote. And this is what happened to me because I read the book. And you know Jerome's going to do it. So come on and grab this book so you can have a story along with Uncle Roby Rome. Okay? Grab this book. Okay? Also, keep in mind, WandaCon, uh, it'll be in March of next year, March 18th through the 22nd. We'll give you more details um, but if you if you want to know more about that, just give me a call. Okay. Also, ATS leads. Get your leads right now so that when Rhino Leg hits, your grandfather's in, you have your leads, and it can work its magic. That's all for me. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us. And may your imagination always be a celebration of you. Love you all. Well, love, love you more. more. Love you more.